Welcome to One Touch Ministries, second our home gathering where where our episodic overseers are uh Pastor Shannon and Prophetess Nadija Young. And I am the campus ministers, uh Minister Henry Jackson. And so yeah, we're going to start off uh service today with reading of scripture, which is by uh Sister Barbara Jackson. Oh big God. Limitation 5, Limitation 3, 22 to 26. <laughs> Verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion, his compassion fail not. There are the new every morning, greater is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, said my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he hear the yoke in his mouth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silent, because he has borne it unto him. He put in his mouth on the dust, if so be, there may be hope. He giveth his cheek to him that smiles him. He is fulfilling with reproach. For the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he, he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercy. For he had he have both not apparently willing not grieving the children of men. The Lord's word has been ready and blessed. No, we're going to actually uh, get in. So we're going to start prayer. Okay, so. But uh, what well, dear, dear Heavenly Father, uh, I want to say thank you for as you uh, giving us this day our daily bread. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for waking us up this morning, for putting us in our right mind, and for uh, giving us joy this morning, and for uh, get, uh, for uh, lifting our spirit. Thank you for giving us another day to see another day. Um, thank you, Lord, for 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 putting food in our. Uh, uh, refrigerators, clothes on our backs, and and, and also uh, love with all of our hearts. Um, that we do ask that uh, you also praying for the covering of of uh, Minister James, uh, that he do uh, receive a hundred uh, fold of him upon his body in the name of Jesus. And and also I like to pray also for for the safe trips. Um, that that I am going to embark on this this uh, next month. Um, in the wonderful name of Jesus, the church say Amen. 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 Say, do you have, do I have a prayer? Yeah. It's kind of Father, thank you for waking up this morning, starting out on another day journey. You didn't have to do it, but thank God that you do. You woke us up this morning, and started us out on a beautiful sunny day. We thank you, Father God, for being with us. Seeking the shedding in all over the world. Thank you for blessing all the women and children of the world. Thank you for blessing Ruthie, Father God. And thank you for giving us, using our wheels and being to take care of the best of our ability. That's your help. Yeah. Well, we just thank you. And like you said, thank you for blessing Brother Jackson to proceed with his surgery and he to come home and take care of himself and enjoy his service. In Jesus' name we pray, God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say, I forgot to pray for you. And then, I say, well, then, Heavenly Father, uh, yeah, I pray for your healing. Heavenly Father, that, uh, that 
that that uh, sister will, will be received her healing in the name of Jesus. Give her uh, everything that, that you have spoken to her future, let it come, come to pass. In the wonderful name of Jesus. That, uh, said, said that we are believing in your healing, we are believing in your deliverance, we are believing within your power. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Trust in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now we don't have a praise and worship. coming to this place and gathered in his name to worship him we have come into this place and gathered in his name to worship him we have come into this place and gather in his name to worship Christ our Lord. Worship him, Christ our Lord. Say, so forget about ourselves and concentrate on him. And worship him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship Christ. Our Lord, worship Him, Christ, our Lord. So I'm going to uh, go into testimony. I thank Him for the Lord that woke me up this morning. I thank the Lord for giving us the portion I have to strength. I look over my daughter, take care of her, the best of my ability. And I just thank the Lord. For blessing all the sick and the shed in, blessing the ones that lay on the bed of affliction. We just thank you. And thank you, Lord, for blessing Jane to make it home, take care of herself, and live a normal life like he should. And we call it in, on your name to help us to take care of one another. And we want to thank you for blessing our neighbor and our neighborhood and all of the churches. Let's stay open, the doors open in your name today. Just thank you. Another blessing we ask in your son Jesus' name, Lord, amen. I'd just like to give my testimony. I, I thank the Lord for waking me up this morning, for putting me in my right mind, and for uh giving me the the joy this morning for getting up and, and for speaking uh this afternoon. Um plus I, I'm also thankful for the home uh sir ministry that you know the Lord's given me to to help me to straighten up in 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 a lot of areas where I need to be straightened up in, as far as personally wise, but um and but uh, uh plus also like to uh give my testimony. I thank God for Minister James' surgery. Um, I thank God for his doctors for doing their jobs, the nurses, and 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 I do hope that he do come back home. You know, get one hundred percent uh. You're recovering. And so now we're going to go into our um, sermon. Uh, if you do have your Bibles with you, then go with me to Ephesians 5, 21 uh, through 33. Um, and I will be reading this from the voice translation. Actually. And so 521 reads, And the Spirit makes it possible to submit humbly to one another out of respect for the anointed. 
say, wives, it should be no different with your husbands. Submit to them as you do to to the Lord. For God has given husbands a sacred duty to lead as the anointed leads the church and serves as the head. The, the, the church is his body and he is her savior. So wives should submit to their husbands respectfully in all things, just as the church yields to the anointed one. So husbands, you must love your wives so deeply, purely, and sacrificially that we can understand it only when we compare it to the love the anointed one has for his bride. With, which is the church. So we know he gave himself up completely to make her his own, washing her clean with all her impurity, with water and the powerful presence of his word. He has given himself so that he can present the church as his radiant bride unstained, unwrinkled, and unblemished, completely free from all impurity, which is holy and innocent before him. So husbands should care for their wives as if their lives depend on it, the same way they care for their own bodies. As you love her, you ultimately are loving part of yourself. And, and say so he... Um, if remember, uh, you are one flesh. No one really hates his own body. He takes care to feed and love it, just as the anointed take, takes care of his church. Because we are living members of his body, and this is the reason a man leaves his father and his mother and is united with his wife. The two come together as one flesh. 32 reads that there is a great mystery reflected in this scripture. And I say that it has to do with the marriage of the anointed one in the church. Uh, nevertheless, each husband is to love and protect his own wife as if she were his very heart. And each wife is to respect her own husband. As I was reading this, yeah, I know in your translation, it, it may say, as the title, um, husband and wife. And so, um, as I was reading through the scripture, it, it kept saying husband and wives. But I do, what I do want you to understand is just because it say husband and wife, this doesn't mean necessarily this scripture is only dedicated only to, uh, married couples. But of course, they, this is basically talking about the, the, you know, the courtships. Some of you who are young, who don't, know what courtships is, then courtships is referring to uh, a boyfriend and girlfriend type relationships uh, or or uh, your engagements or marriage relationships. Uh, here it says verse 21, and it says, and the spirit makes it possible to submit humbly to one another out of respect for the anointing. And so, so the Holy Spirit will make it possible for us to submit to uh, one another. And so what does this mean in the Greek? It actually, the word submits means to arrange in order under, all right? So, um, so like, as you would think about a, a low ranking officer, um, surrendering to their higher upper officer. And so, um, and, and the reason why that, happens is because of the order of things. Um all right. So in verse twenty two it said the wives is talking to the women and said it should be no different uh with your husbands. And then again it's talking to uh us as men when it says husbands, but it says submit to them as you do to the Lord. So the Lord is wanting you to submit to us as your man, as you do unto the Lord. So, and so in other words, um, 
But then even though that, that the Lord asked you to submit to us as men, but yeah, but then again here, nothing I'm going to say to you, that word submit means, you know, to arrange in order under. And so, so you have to understand, you know, what men you're surrendering to. And so, you know, it's no different from a, a I want to say a low ranking officer surrendering to a high ranking officer, but that specific area uh, of the military, because they, they, they are like different parts of the military. Um, and so it depends on what group you're with, then that's who you're surrendering to. And so, um, and so choosing a man, uh, is very important because who you're, uh, choosing to come under, it'd be because you're under his authority. Then I mean, you have the, uh, I want to say you will have the same anointing that he has. So the anointing that he flows in, you, you will flow in it because you're under his anointing, which the Lord gave him. All right. So verse 23 in the sense for a guy has given husbands a sacred duty to lead as the anointed leads the church and serves as the head. And so here it said for God give men a sacred duty to lead as the Lord leads the church. And serves as the head. And it says in here in parentheses. The church is his body. And he is her savior. And so. What does this basically mean. Is that the Lord is expecting. For us as man. You know to be like him. You know how he. Uh, uh, submits. Himself to the church. So he's looking for us as man. To submit ourselves to our women. And so. You know, just like as he did onto the church. And so, and so basically what this means is, you know, if she's half, and, and, and it's going to get further down. But, but the sacred duty part is what I want to, uh, uh, what I really want women to pay attention to because that, the, the, our duty is to, uh, uh, it's again, it's to not to just, um, be your your head, but but to be a head or to lead someone, it means to to take care of them. So so I have to know you know what you're feeling. Uh, uh I want to say e emotionally. I have to know what you're feeling physically, and I have to know how you feel or where you're at spiritually, because those are the three areas that I have to know. As your leader, so I can make sure that I'm doing my job as your man correctly, and so you know, so just like when the when the church, when we as a body of Christ have something that's wrong with us, then we go to the Lord, and the Lord will you know solve our problems. And so, just like how the Lord solves our problems, we as men have to solve our women problems, and and so the only way we're going to do that as men. Is we have to have a a relationship with the Lord, and so um, this is why why it's important that we have to be, you know, I want to say, you no, know, under the Lord. So that's why the Lord is my head, and I'm your head, and 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 basically you're the kid's head, and so yeah. So here in said verse twenty four, and says so wives should submit to their husbands respectfully and it and it says in all things and so so it doesn't just mean you only submit it to me only like when you need your bills paid um or or only you know when you want sex or only when you want you know certain things that you try to cherry pick certain things no what the scripture says you must submit to me respectfully in all things and so you you don't suppose only come to me only for the things that you want, but you have to come to me for everything. And so again, uh uh with this being said, right? Um 
Well, this, that does not mean that because you're coming, you're supposed to come to me. That doesn't mean that you're uh, not going to think for yourself. Uh, but but I want you to understand, but the reason why I'm there, you know, is to help to make your life better. Just like it is for you to submit to me to help to make my life better. And so that 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 is where the two will come together and... And to make make it a one, right? And so verse twenty five and twenty six says, "Husbands, you you must." So the Lord is talking to us as men. Uh, so you must love your wives uh, deeply, purely, and sacrificially. That that we can understand it only when we compare it to the love the Anointed One has for His bride, which is the church. And He continues and say that we know He gave himself up completely to make her his own so so basically what this means is as men we have to be willing to make sacrifices you know for our women and so most men like myself don't have an issue with sacrificing certain things you know uh which to make sure that you're being taken care of to make sure that you have everything that you need and so Again, so we as men kind of basically know, um, um, yeah, that comes along with, with, you know, being in, in, in a re relationship. Um, and so as I do continue, and it says here, and the Lord even says to us, uh, to watch her clean with all her impurities with water and the powerful presence of his word. And so when he says with the water, he, he's talking about um, so the water as symbolized as the Holy Spirit. And so, again, that, that's one of the reasons why we want to have a relationship with the Lord as man. But secondly, the powerful presence of his word. So we, we have to have the word in us. And, and so so how are we going to watch her or so how are we going to make her, uh, I want to say, a more better woman uh, uh, for us is we have to continue to keep speaking the word to her. And so not just from a religious standpoint, but also what to teach it to her. Um, and so what to help her to understand, oh, we're using this scripture for today. And, and I thought to explain to her, this is how we're going to line up our life with the word. And so she can understand that this is, how the word uh, uh, um, is supposed to be inside of our lives. It's to help to make our lives better. So it says, verse 27, and he has given himself so that he can present the church as his ready and bride. And so basically what the Lord basically said here is, uh, is that after you have uh, 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 taught her and, and, and you have, Build her up emotionally and physically and spiritually with, with your teaching and your preaching. Then, then it's important that be because you you done all that work, you build this woman up with the confidence and and all of that with her character and all of that. Then why would you just you know put her on the shelf for some other man to come take you know? Uh, 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 all, all the hard work that you poured into this woman, and so it will be j j just like me, you know, um, getting a car. Me, well, me finding a car at a junkyard, and me actually paying a, a mechanic, which you actually was to strip it of, of the rust and everything, and to get it back to new, to paint it up, and for me to buy, you know, rims to put it on the car, and a new sound system and everything. And and I turn around and I decide that I want to give the the car up, all of a sudden, and, and let someone else drive in it. No, um, you know, I I have spent my money on this car, and so I I I've actually decked it out, you know, um, to my liking. I put up the money, the time, you know, and so. Now, I'm going to drive this car for myself. Um, now, I'm not relaying a woman to a car here, but 
But the whole purpose of what I'm making is, the Lord saying is, after you poured into this woman and built this woman up and and uplifted her and 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 actually help her to become come the woman that she is that you need her to be for you, then then it doesn't make sense for you just to you know walk away from her, right? And so, because that just doesn't you know logically for us as men that to, to make sense to us. So here, um, so it says, so, okay, so it says, so husbands, verse 28, so husbands should care for their wives as if their lives depend on it, the same way they care for their own bodies. So as you love her, you ultimately are loving part of yourself. And so again, Right, uh, uh, um, then this is actually like very important to understand. Um, now this doesn't mean you know that you want to get your woman to wear a certain clothes because that's what you like on her, even though it's nothing wrong with you know, you you tell her that this is the type of clothes you know that you really like, you know, on a woman, and yes, she should take interest in that. Because a woman do want to, you know, please her man or she don't mind dressing a certain way. If she knows that's going to get your attention, if that's what's, if it's going to turn you on to her. But the, the, another note I want to make very clear is because, you know, when I dated this, this lady once, uh, and oppositely told her, oh, I like a woman in jeans. It's because I, I, I like to see a, a a woman's shape, you know the 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 shape. So, you no, know, even though I I kept telling her, you know, and she will wear jeans from time to time, but the majority of the time she will always wear dresses and skirts and these other type of things. And so, you know, I you know, uh, of course she looked great in either or, but. But I really, but she will really, you know, grab my attention, you know, when she will wear jeans. But, but, uh, what the Lord said to me is that it, it is important that I understand, you know, uh, that, that the way she's dressing is, is her, you know, um, um, no opinion. So, so that's what she likes. But most importantly, you know, her choosing those decisions may also be because this is what the Lord may have asked her to a certain character that the Lord may be trying to build up in her, you know, that I don't know anything about. And so, so you want to be conscious and about, you know, yeah, sure. You could tell your woman what you like for her to wear and she don't, she don't, doesn't have an issue with wearing it, but we want to be conscious and aware of, of that, that we give her room for her to make, her 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 own decisions as well. So just like how the Lord give us our decision as a man to to dress uh uh how we want to. But yeah, uh attaining to that, um so I'm just going 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 to continue on. But there there's another word that I wanted to point out here uh that is very important. Um in verse twenty one there's a word in the say and the spirit makes it possible to submit, which we know what submit is, uh, humbly to one another out of respect. And so the, the word respect and I and F for some of you who, who who don't know what the word respect mean, um in the Bible there's another word that that it uh uh refer there's another word that uh, I don't wanna say uh, that that replaces that word, which is uh, reverence. And so reverence in the Hebrew, it means to set forth an attitude towards another of doing him honor. And so, so in other words, to respect uh, your husband or to respect me as your man, um, it is important that you understand that that the way your 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 attitude have to uh uh it says here set forth an attitude 
towards another so to to give him honor and so and so when you're dressing a certain way uh ladies um yeah there's nothing wrong with with you wearing the you know the 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 like i said the 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 jeans that you know that us men like to see your shape and those type of things that there's nothing wrong with that and and i know you feel more you know sexually attractive when you uh wear those type of clothes that's more revealing but um but like when we're in a i want to say when we're in a church setting or like when we're you know somewhere uh about you know in 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 these places that require us to to have a certain uh character or a certain attitude towards this environment right then we don't want to go out of that and and, and just do what we want to do so yeah, we want to be respectful by meaning when you go to church. Uh, I'm very sure if your church is is very open with you wearing anything, then cool, then wear that. But however, be respectful by make sure that you don't show too much. And so, and the reason why is because your men can lose, you know, honor. Um, and so, so in other words, you know, other women may look at your men. And they may think about him. I said, okay, he, he's, um, way well, he's not a man, you know, of God because he allowed his woman to come out here and dress like this. And so, so the vice versa, you know, if a man, if I come out, you know, wearing, well, I'm sure myself and I'm being disrespectful in that sense, I'm very sure another man will look at you and think of you like, you know, um, like what type of woman is you to allow your man to to come disrespectful and that type of thing? And so, so the way how we present ourselves, uh, 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 what you represent our our loved one, right? So we don't want to go out of this 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 prideful spirit of, you know, oh, oh I want to dress the way how I want to dress, right? So we want to make sure that we're respectful to that, um. Uh, it's because cause we want to make sure, you know, our 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 symphony, our uh loved one, you know, get gets that respect. So here, um it says here said said no one relates to his own body. He takes care to feed and love it. Just as the anointing take care of his church. Because we are living members of his body, and this is the reason a man leaves his wife and his mother and is united with his wife and said the two come together as one flesh and so and so basically what what and um yeah I know if you're rereading the the King James version it will technically say and the two shall become one flesh so the word become uh, meaning that that you have to grow into uh, uh, each other, and so for me to grow into you, into knowing what type of woman that you is, and for me to point or to notice those things about you, you know that 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 is ungodly. Uh, it's my responsibility as your man to look at those behaviors and to line them up with the word of God. And to come back to you and to teach and explain to you the reason why you shouldn't, you know, have these type of attitudes or the, the reason why you shouldn't uh, 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 present yourself in this way or, you know, all those type of things. And so once you uh, uh, submit or another way of putting it, once you're falling in line with me, then we will be able to, to be in harmony. And so. It it is very critical that I want women to understand um that that when a man is is actually uh caring for you and loving you uh in this type of way, then specifically that is what God called us to do. And, and so it's so specifically uh so don't assume that, that, that a man is soft or he's uh, 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 not a man at all just because he's you know asking you 
uh, you know, is, is you okay if you need anything? And so, you know, don't be that naive type of woman, you know, or don't be that prideful type of woman or that ungodly type of woman who, 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 who stresses yourself out simply because you don't want to allow him to be the man that God called him to be. And so for him to lead, for us to lead, we have to know, you know, how you're feeling, you know, what you're, uh, uh, what you're feeling and, you know, it's to make sure that you are okay, uh, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And so that is a job of a leader. So, you know, so as any leader would tell you, yeah, it's my job to make sure that you have what you need and all of those things. Then, but for that to happen, you have to make sure that you keep me aware of, you know, what you're feeling and all of those things. Y'all would like to speak sevenfold blessings over your life. Number one, I speak blessings of health for you and your family. Number two, I speak blessings of deliverance from any habits that you have in your life. Say number three, I speak blessings of peace to your mind from anybody or anything that may be disturbing you. Number four, I speak blessings of salvation to any friends or loved ones. Number five, I speak blessings of comfort to any person that is hurting, that is lonely, that is bereaved, or is confused. Number six, I speak blessings of finances, a debt cancellation, a prosperity, and of economic empowerment to all of God's people, according to his riches and glory. And number seven, I speak blessings of anointings and promotion in your life to complete your assignment, to move forward in your purpose. I want to get to the benediction part of the service. Um, at, 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 as an announcement, I said, uh, I just want to say uh, as an announcement, uh, next uh, Sunday, we, we, we will not be having a uh, home service next Sunday. Um, so I do want you to have a blessed uh a week that week. Um but however, um if you do have, have your Bibles then go uh if you wanna read along with us, you can go to the book of Numbers six twenty four through twenty six. And I and I'm reading this from the mess translation. You don't got your uh piece of paper? Yeah, your uh, oh, yeah, piece of paper. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah, you yeah, you ready? Yeah. Okay, it say may yeah. God bless you. Yeah. May God keep you. Yeah. May God smile yeah. on you. May God gift you. May yeah. God look you full in the face and yeah. make you prosper. Yeah. 